Hello, and today I'm going to do another D&D 5e build, but this time I wanted to try something a little different from my past builds. Um, as part of some of my builds, um, the last builds that I've been doing has been more min-maxing builds, and I haven't really done a lot of, of roleplay builds, so I've decided that I'm going to do a roleplay build this time. Um, the build name I like to call The Cook, because um, this build is basically going to revolve around a feat in the Unearthed Arcana called Gourmand. Um, basically, um, the feat Gourmand, since it is in Unearthed Arcana, um, sometimes uh, some DMs will not allow things from Unearthed Arcana into their campaign, and so you might want to ask your DM before you actually make a build similar to this if you're going to be using the Gourmand feat. But I don't really see it being a problem unless the DM is getting really hardcore about about food and keeping up with rations and things of that sort. Alright, so, so far as the build strategy, we're going to be revolving around melee damage and group support. <laughs> the reason why I put group support here is because we're going to be making a lot of food for our allies. So far as class, I chose the Kensei Monk because uh, I really don't see this guy... Um, walking around in plate armor um, and really armor to begin with. Um, I really see this guy as more of uh, walking around in an apron in a back room somewhere rather than uh, uh, trotting around in armor. Also, so far as race, I chose the stout halfling, which uh, halflings just um, if you've read any of their descriptions that talk about their love of food and song and things like that, and you see them on Lord of the Rings and they're talking about uh, Elevensies and second breakfast and everything like that, I think that uh, a stout halfling fits a really good in with this build. So far as racial traits that we pick up for the stout halfling will be plus two to dexterity, plus one to constitution, the lucky ability, which allows us to reroll attack rolls of one, the Brave Ability, which gives us advantage on fear rolls. Halfling Nimbleness, which allows us to move through the space of any creature that is a size larger than us. And Stout Resilience, it gives us advantage on saving throws against poison and resistance to poison damage, which is kind of funny for the flavor if you have any kind of uh, po or rotted food and stuff that could poison somebody. This guy actually has resistance to it and he can actually taste it before he, before he cooks with it. So far as important abilities that we pick up for the Kensei Monk, um, we pick up Martial Arts at the first level, which allows us to uh, replace the damage die for unarmed attacks and also allows us to make an unarmed attack as a bonus action. Also at the first level, we picked up Unarmored Defense, which allows us to calculate our armor class as 10 plus our Dexterity modifier plus our Wisdom modifier. Moving on to second level, we gain our key points, which allows us, this gives us Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, and Step of the Wind, which Flurry of Blows, um, after you take the attack action, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Patient Defense allows us to spend one key point to take the dodge action as a bonus action. And Step of the Wind allows us to spend one key point to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action. Also at the second level we gained unarmored movement which um, increases our speed by 10 feet if we're unarmored and it also increases at the 6th, 10th, and 14th levels. Moving on to third level we pick up deflect missile which uh, you can use your, your reaction to catch or deflect missiles and also reduce the damage and gives the possibility of catching the missile and throwing it back at the person or uh, that shot it at you or somebody else this I really like for the build because I can really see this halfling in a kitchen somewhere and he's getting plates and, and cutlery thrown at his head and somehow that it has given him an ability to uh, dodge or deflect missiles so far as this build. Next for the third level for the path of the Kensei we pick up Kensei weapons, Agile Parry, Kensei Shot, and Way of the Brush. For Kensei weapons, you choose two types of Kensei weapons that are simple or martial. Um, I believe you pick one melee and one range weapon. Um, these, monk, these weapons are monk weapons for you. And um, with this build, um, since it's not a min-max build, I would probably go with a dagger and see if the uh, DM would allow me to flavor the dagger as a kitchen knife. So that way I could be doing martial arts with my kitchen knife. 
Agile Parry. If you make an unarmed strike as part of the, the attack action and are holding Kensei weapons, you gain plus two to your armor class. Next is Kensei Shot. You, as a bonus action on your turn, you can make your ranged Kensei weapon attacks deal an extra 1d4 damage. Lastly, with this part, we pick up Way of the Brush, which gives us proficiency with calligrapher supplies or painter supplies. I would probably go with calligrapher supplies because uh, that would allow me to, um, if we ever had like a, a town that we returned to a lot as a party or or uh, kind of a home base, it would allow me to create a restaurant and I could make uh, signs with calligraphy and uh, menus with the calligrapher supplies. At the fourth level, we pick up Slow Fall. You can use your reaction whenever you fall to reduce your damage by five times your monk level. At fifth level, we pick up Extra Attack, which allows us to attack twice whenever you take the attack action. Fifth level, we pick up Stunning Strike. You can spend one key point when you hit with a weapon attack to attempt to stun the target. Sixth level, one with the blade. Um, it gives us the ability to have our Kensei weapons as magical attacks and allows us to Death Strike, which allows you to spend one key point to make a, a Kensei weapon deal extra damage equal to your martial arts dice, and you can only use this feature once on each turn. Next at the sixth level, key and powered strikes. Our unarmed strikes count as magical as well. Seventh level, evasion. You only take half damage on dexterity saving throws that fail and no damage if you succeed. Seventh level, stillness of mind. You use your action to end charmed and fear effects. Tenth level, purity of body. Um, it gives you immunity to disease and poison, which I still think that would be funny for a, a chef to be immune to diseases and poisons. He could try out a lot of uh, the food before he actually prepares it to see. And I'm pretty sure you'd probably have to have some kind of check that goes along with this, but still, it still would be hilarious him tasting spoiled food before he actually tries it and makes it in his concoctions. At the 11th level, we pick up the Sharpen the Blade. As a bonus action, you can spend one key point to a maximum of three key points to give one Kensei weapon a bonus to attack and damage rolls equal to the number of key points spent. Basically this makes one um, Kensei weapon a plus three weapon if you spend the three key points. Tongue of the Sun and Moon at the 13th level you understand all spoken languages and everyone that hears you speak can understand you. I can really that this really is funny with this build because I can see the 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 halfling uh, yelling at some dude in French in the back of a restaurant while he's taking orders. At the 14th level, Diamond Soul, you pick up proficiency with all saving throws and can spend one key to reroll fail saves. At the 15th level, Timeless Body, it removes the need for food and water and can't be aged magically. Uh, this one removes the need for food and water, but not the ability to take in food and water. Because <laughs> I think this guy would just be like, no, I, I totally skipped this feat because I, I always want to eat food. So, But uh, it just makes it to where he doesn't have to eat, but he always chooses to eat, probably. <clears throat> At the 17th level, Unerring Accuracy. If you miss with an attack roll using a monk weapon, you can re-roll it. You can also use this um, only once per turn. The 18th level, Empty Body. You spend four key points to become invisible. And lastly, at the uh, 20th level, we picked up Perfect Self, which allows us to regain four key points if you have no key points when you roll initiative. So far as skills, Animal Handling, Insight, Medicine, Perception, Survival are all great skills, but I would probably go with Survival, Perception, and maybe also Medicine too. Um, survival um, is definitely going to be finding ingredients and uh, maybe perception to where those ingredients might be whenever you find them you know out in the woods but I'm um, seeing as how this build is already going to use wisdom as part of it I think those two are, are probably the main two skills you want to pick 
All right, next is backgrounds. Definitely the Outlander. Definitely the Outlander. And with the Outlander's ability to find food in the wild, that'll definitely help you keep ingredients to keep cooking for the party the entire um, session. So um, you, if you don't like the Outlander feat, you can probably go with a folk hero. You can be a, a, a spy that worked in the kitchen, a guild artisan, um, a sailor, a soldier, or an urchin are all great backgrounds for this. But I think so far as, as the role play for this build, I think Outlander and his ability to find ingredients in the wild um, just outclasses all the rest of the backgrounds. Our saves, we pick up strength and dexterity. Our stats, we definitely want to max out dexterity because that's going to be our for our attack and damage rolls. And next, we want to max out wisdom. Feats, uh, we've already gone over this, the Gourmand feat. And uh, maybe you might also want to pick up the Tavern Brawler. Um, I think it would be hilarious if you had um, clubs as a Kensei weapon and... Uh, um, you actually went around beating people with a frying pan. <laughs> the frying pan is now a uh, Kensei weapon for you. And so Tavern Brawler would fit right into this build. Equipment, cooking supplies, um, also uh, the decanter of endless water would uh, m might maybe go in pretty good with this build because you'll always have water to cook vegetables, wash your hands, um, clean your area, things like that. Um, um, just as a, as a flavor part, just endless water for for the, a chef to be able to cook with is always a good thing. Um, flavor, um, I think a, a chef or a cook out to prove his skills with food um, might be a perfectly viable uh, role play option, or um, it could be an adventurer that took this up as a hobby, but uh, he wants to be a professional chef is his goal in life. I mean, so what? He has skills as a fighter as well. Um, um, you'll have to come up with why he took to adventuring, but that's the fun in coming up with a lot of these builds is, is finding out where your character's motivation comes from. Next for flavor, we can be a normal person who was somehow thrown into adventuring. Um, maybe he was in the castle with you and forced to leave and you were all running and now you're adventurers. Or maybe he was a trusted friend to one of the party members. Um, I know one of our campaigns that we run, um, we have uh, one of our party members had to be a noble, and we all had to know him somehow. And a trusted friend that uh, worked in the kitchen at the palace probably would be a very good fit in a campaign of that sort. All right, guys, don't forget to, I uh, think that's pretty much it for this build. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys later.